mass uh, spectrometry mass spectrometry is a powerful analytical technique used to quantify and identify unknown compounds within a sample and to elucidate the structure and chemical properties of different substances it is a micro analytical technique requiring only a few nano moles of the sample to obtain characteristic information about the structure and molecular weight of analyte. Nowadays, mass spectrometry is used in many areas, including pharmaceutical, clinical, ge geological, biotechnological, and environmental sciences. Mass spectrometry has both qualitative and quantitative uses. The mass spectrum of each compound is unique and can be used as a chemical fingerprint to characterize the sample. Mass spectra is used in two general ways to provide the identity of compounds, to establish the structure of a new compound. The mass spectrum of a compound helps to establish the structure of a new compound in several, in several different ways. It can give the exact molecular mass, it can give a molecular formula, or it can reveal the presence of certain structural units in a molecule. Uh, the machine that we are using in mass spectrometry that is called as mass spectrometer. Basic principle of mass spectrometer. A mass spectrometer generates multiple ions from the sample under investigation and then separate them according to their specific mass to charge ratio and then record the relative abundance of each ion type. You can see this is mass spectra. On this side this is uh, mass to charge ratio and on this side this is the relative abundance. In this diagram here you see the different components of mass spectrometer. Here you see this is the inlet system. Here you see this is the ionization source, electron beam ionization source. And here this is the heater or vaporizer. And after here converting when the sample enters through the inlet system, it comes to the ionization source. And here in this diagram here you see this is the electron beam ionization source. So it strikes the sample and convert it into, there is the ejection of electron from the analyte and it convert into ion. And these ions are accelerated toward the, the, uh, the mass analyzer. And here the mass analyzer separate the different ions based on the difference in mass to charge ratio. So those uh, ions which having a smaller mass to charge ratio, they will, they will bend more and the other one and then they strike the detector. And the information and the results we are getting in the form of the mass spectrum. Here you see this is the mass to charge ratio on the x-axis and on the y-axis there is the relative abundance. Uh, mass spectrometer consists of three major components, ion source, analyzer, detector system. Ion source for producing gaseous ions from the substance being studied, analyzer, for resolving the ions into the characteristic mass components according to their mass, according to their difference in mass to charge ratio. Detector system for detecting the ions and recording the relative abundance of each of the resolved ionic species. In addition, a sample introduction system is necessary to admit the sample to be studied to the ion source while maintaining the high vacuum requirement uh, of the technique and a computer is required to control the instrument, acquire and manipulate data, and compare spectra to reference libraries. So here you see this is the inlet system, this is the ionic source, it's the mass analyzer, and here this is the detector. Along with the detector, here you see this is the data system, the computer, and here we are getting the mass spectrum. Common component of mass spectrum, inlet system, Inlet system, there are three types of inlet system for solid, for liquid, for the gaseous. Uh, here is the ionization source. There are different types of ionization source. ESI, EI, FAB, CI, FI, FD, MALDI, PD, and TI. And after that, here you see the mass analyzer. We have different types of mass analyzer, quadrupole, uh, time of flight, uh, ion trap, and PTICR. And after that, there will be the detector. We have different types of detectors like uh, Faraday cup, um, photomultiplier tube, electron multiplier tube, Faraday cups, and here you see the 
micro channel plate and so on inlet system we have three types of inlet system for solid the inlet system for solid sample with lower vapor pressure directly inserted into the ionization chamber and volatilization is controlled by heating the probe for liquid liquid inlet system are handled by uh, hypodermic needles injection through a silicon rubber uh, uh, dam uh, gaseous sample are leaked into the ionization chamber directly with the help of mercury manometer inlet system for solid for liquid for gaseous ionization the selection of sample inlet depends on the nature of the sample and the sample matrix most ionization techniques are designed for gas phase molecule so the inlet system must transfer the analyte into ionic source as a gas phase molecule if the analyte is sufficiently volatile and thermally stable a variety of inlets are available gaseous in sample with high vapor pressure are leaked directly into the source uh, region uh, with the help of mercury manometer liquid and solid are usually heated to increase the vapor pressure for analysis liquid samples are handled by hypodermic needles injection through a silicon rubber if the analyte is thermally labile thermally labile means it decomposes at high temperature or it does not have sufficient vapor pressure the sample must be directly ionized from the uh, for, from the condensed phase gas chromatography complex mixture are routinely separated by gas chromatography and mass spectrometry is used to identify and quantify the individual components the most significant characteristic of the inlets are the amount of gas gc carrier gas that enter the mass spectrometer and the amount of analyte that enter the mass spectrometer ideally all the analyte and none of the gc carrier gas would enter the source region the most common GCMS interface now uses a capillary GC column that is C18 column. Liquid chromatography. Nowadays we also use the liquid chromatography. A LC inlet are used to introduce thermally labile compound not easily separated by gas chromatography. These inlets are used for temperature sensitive compound. The sample is ionized directly from the condensed phase direct insertion probe the direct insertion probe is widely used to introduce low vapor pressure liquid and solid into the mass spectrometer this is the important uh, this is important for analyzing temperature sensitive compounds although the direct insertion probe is more cumbersome than the direct vapor inlet it is useful for a wide range of sample direct analyzation of sample some compounds either decompose when heated or have no significant vapor pressure and can be introduced by direct ionization from the condensed phase. These are used for LCMS, glow discharge MS, uh, FAB, and laser ablation. Ionization methods. Ionization methods refers to the mechanism of ionization. While the ionization source is the mechanical device that allow ionization to occur. Here I'm not talking about uh, uh, ionization source. I'm talking of the, the mechanism of ionization. There are different mechanisms of ionization that is protonation, deprotonation, uh, ketonization, transfer of charge molecule to the gas phase, electron ejection, electron capture, and so on. Ion source. The ion source is the part of the mass spectrometer that ionize the material under analysis. The ions are then transported by magnetic or electric field to the mass analyzer. Molecular ions are formed when energy of the electron beam reach to 10 to 15 electron volt. Fragmentation of the ion reach only at higher bombardment energy at 70 electron volt. Fun uh, function produce uh, ions with mass discrimination of the sample, accelerate ions, into the mass analyzer. Annotation source based on the on the phase of the sample because maybe sample is in gaseous phase or in solution phase or in solid phase. For gaseous phase, we are using different types of ionization source like electron ionization, chemical ionization, photoionization, 
For solution phase, we are using electrospheric ionization, atmospheric pressure ionization, atmospheric pressure uh, chemical ionization. For solid phase, we are using uh, MALDI, metric assisted laser desorption ionization, plasma desorption, and fast atom bombardment ionization. Classification of ionization sources, desorption sources, atmospheric pressure ionization, and gas phase ionization. Desorption sources are electrospheric ionization, matrix assisted laser desorption ionization, MALDI, uh, fast atom bombardment ionization, FAB, uh, field desorption ionization, plasma desorption ionization, atmospheric, atmospheric uh, pressure ionization, atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, atmospheric pressure photo ionization, gas phase ionization, electron impact ionization, chemical ionization, field ionization. Electrospray ionization. Electrospray ionization is a technique used in mass spectrometry to produce ions using an electrospray in which a high voltage is applied to a liquid to create an aerosol. It is especially useful in producing ions from macromolecules because it overcomes the propensity of these molecules to fragment when ionized. ESI is so-called soft ionization technique since there is a very little fragmentation. This can be advantageous in the sense that the molecular ion uh, is always absorbed. However, very little structure information can be gained from the simple mass spectrum obtained. This disadvantage can be overcome by coupling ASI with tender mass spectrometry. Another important advantage of ASI is that solution phase information can be retained into the gas phase, application used for protein identification and characterization. Here you see from the HPLC, the sample is coming here to the inlet capillary here. And here you see a high voltage from here to here. There is a high voltage source. And here you see this is the Taylor cone. And from the Taylor cone here, you see this in this region. When the voltage show, there is a half voltage difference. So here it converted into droplet. And the droplet from the droplet. And here you see due to the voltage difference, this is uh, for most electropositive when this is most electronegative so here you see the droplet become charged and when it is become charged so then, uh, then there is the evaporation and due to the evaporation means the solvent is evaporate and here the the uh, the analyte converting into the uh, to the charge ion here again electrospheric ionization source here you see here the Due to high voltage difference, here you see this is most electropositive and here this is most electronegative. So here you see when it is coming out from here, from this uh, nebulization, nebulization uh, uh, source, so it converts into charged droplets and here the solvent is evaporates and here you see the, the, the droplet size is reducing and we again and again here it converts into charged ion. And these charged ions are attracted toward the analyzer. ESI is soft ionization technique which is useful for biological molecule of large molecular mass generates a high charge droplets directly from the infused solution. Dissolvation gas is applied to the charge droplet to reduce the size of the droplets. The droplet fission leads to the formation of individual gas phase analyte ion. Here you see this is gas phase analyte ion. Maldi matrix assisted laser desorption ionization technique. MALDI is also based on soft ionization method where ions formation does not lead to a significant loss of simple integrity. There is not much uh, uh, fragmentation. Consequently, consequently, the high quantity and speed associated with complete automation has made MALDI top mass spectrometer and an obvious choice for proteomics work on large scale. Advantages Gentle ionization technique, high molecular weight analyte can be ionized, molecule need not to be volatilized, wide array of matrices produces singly charged ion, thus interpretation become easy, clear separation by chromatography is not required, disadvantages, multi-matrix cluster ions, unclear low mass to charge species, analyte must be very low vapor pressure, pulse nature of source limits compatibility with many mass analyzer. Coupling MALDI with chromatography can be difficult. Analyzers that absorb the laser can be problematic.
uh, Maldi principle. The sample for analysis by Maldi is prepared by mixing or coating with solution of energy absorbent organic compound called matrix. Here you see here is the matrix and this matrix is coated on the surface of a target plate and here you see this is a laser source and when the light radiation is uh, hitting this surface okay so there is ejection of uh, ions and these ions are attracted to the fly tube the matrix performs two important function it absorbs proton energy from the laser beam and transfer it into excitation energy of the solid system it serves as a solvent for the analyte so the so that the intermolecular forces are reduced and aggregation of the analyte molecule is held to a minimum. Some desirable characteristics of a typical Maldi matrix are a strong light absorption property at the wavelength of the laser flux, the ability to form microcrystal with the sample, a low sublimation temperature which facilitates the formation of an instantaneous high pressure plumb of matrix sample during the laser pulse duration, the participation in some kind of photochemical reaction so that the sample molecules can be ionized with high yield. Here again you see this is the laser source, the laser radiation, here you see this is the sample plate and here you see the matrix and when it strikes the, the laser source, the radiation can strike this uh, surface so it ejects the uh, analyte ions as well as the as well as the matrix ion and those are then attracted toward the mass analyzer. A technique to allow the high molecular weight compounds into the gas phase as intact ion. The mechanism of Maldi consists of three processes mixture, matrix, excitation, analyte ionization. The time of light analyzer are always used with the Maldi ionization source. The Maldi Tough the process, process is a two-phase procedure. Two procedure. Initially, the initially, samples are fixed samples in a crystalline, are matrix. crystalline matrix. In the initial in the ionization initial step, step, they're bombarded, they're by, bombarded a by a laser. The sample molecules, the sample molecules vaporize, vaporize into the, into the vacuum while being ionized, while being at, ionized the at the same time. High voltage, High voltage is then applied to accelerate to the charged particles. The, charged particles. Mm -hmm. the second step the second is the time-of-flight time mass, mass spectrometry phase. phase. In the linear mode, the particles, particles will impinge upon the linear detector within a few nanoseconds after ionization. Higher mass molecules will arrive later than lighter ones. Flight time measurements make it possible to determine molecular masses directly. Each peak in the spectrum corresponds to the specific mass of the particle along the time axis, starting with the ionization moment. In the reflector mode, the particles are diverted so that they fly towards a second detector. In addition to extending the flight distance, the reflector also focuses the masses. The combination of these two effects makes for higher resolution than in the linear node. Application of MALDI, proteomics, pharmaceutical analysis, microbiology, forensic analysis, and environmental analysis. Third type of mass analyzer is fast atom bombardment ionization source. In fast atom ionization bombardment source, here you see fast particle beam strike here again. The analyte is coated on the surface uh, uh, because it is. Uh, the analyte is mixed with the matrix and it is coated at the surface of a plate, okay, and it is then struck, struck by fast uh, particle beam. Here you see the fast particle beam, and it ejects the it ejects the analyte along with the matrix ions, and these ions are then attracted toward the mass analyzer. Fast atom bombardment: the analyte is dissolved in a viscous liquid. 
typically glycerol, and ionization is achieved by bombardment of the sample matrix by a beam of fast moving neutral atoms. The bombardment atoms are usually rare gases like xenon or argon. Common matrices include glycol, glycerol, thiglycerol, uh, nitrobenzyl alcohol, triethanol amine, etc. In order to achieve a very high kinetic energy, the atoms of the gas are first ionized and these ions are then passed through an electric field. After acceleration, the fast moving ions enter into the chamber containing further gas atoms and collision of ions and atoms lead to the charge exchange. The fast atoms formed in this process retain the original kinetic energy of the fast ions and proceed toward the analyzer. Advantages fast uh, atom bombardment analyzer is extensively used for the analyzation of high molecular weight samples of biological origin, extensively used for obtaining mass spectra of salt depending upon the nature of its cation and anion. FAB spectra usually provide relatively abundant molecular or quasi molecular ions and also show some structurally important fragment ions. Disadvantages, the, the matrix also form ions on bombardment in addition to those formed by the sample which complicate the spectrum. Fab samples, the surface rather than the bulk concentration of the solute present enhance limit quantitative measurement. Matrices, one of the crucial characteristics of Fab is using liquid matrix. Due to the high vacuum condition, Usual solvent for chemistry laboratories such as water and other common organic solvent is precluded for fab. Solvent with high boiling point called matrix is necessary to be employed. Here you see the list of matrices, matrix, glycerol for the sample who is having mass to charge ratio less than 93, thiglycerol, nitrobenzyl alcohol, octyl nitro phenyl ether, triethanol amine. Application, elucidation of amino acid sequence of the ligus peptide uh, ephra 15. This is a protein inhibitor of mitochondria ATP's activity. The separation in mass analysis of peptide arising from protein enzymatic digestion. Field desorption ionization technique. Here you see the plasma desorption. Again, here you see the plasma. Here you see this is uh, the sample is coated on the surface of a thin flat. And here you see a plasma. You know a plasma is uh, uh, is a mixture of uh, gas. And it strikes at the surface of this uh, flat on which the sample is coated. And it ejects the, the the analyte ion as well as the surface ion and those ions are then accelerated toward the mass analyzer. Plasma desorption produce molecular ions from the sample coated on a thin foil with a highly energetic fishing, fission fragments from the California blast through from the opposite side of the foil. The fission of California nucleus is highly exothermic and the energy is released is carried away by a wide range of fission fragments which are heavy atomic ion pairs. Ion pairs fission fragment depart in opposite direction. Each fission of the radioactive nucleus give rise to two fragments traveling in opposite direction. A typical pair of fission fragments is uh, 142 barium 18 plus and the other one is 106 TC 22 plus with kinetic energy roughly 97 and 104 mega electron volt respectively. When such a high energy fission fragment pass through the sample foil, here you see this uh, energy is strike the sample foil. Externally, extremely rapid localized heating occurs, producing a temperature in the range of 10,000 Kelvin. Consequently, the molecules in this plasma zone are dissolved with the production of both positive and negative ions. These ions are then accelerated 
out of the surface into the analyzer system. Advantages work well for small organic molecule, low molecular weight of polymers and petrochemical fraction. Disadvantages sensitive to alkali metal contaminations. Sample must be soluble in solvent that is suitable for thermally unstable and non-volatile sample. Structure information is not obtained as very little fragmentation occur. Atmospheric pressure chemical ionization. Atmospheric pressure chemical ionization is an ionization method used in mass spectrometry, commonly LCMS, which utilizes gas phase ion molecules reaction at atmospheric pressure. It is an ionization method that is similar to chemical ionization, where corona discharge on a solvent spray produce primary ions. ABCI is mainly used with polar and relatively non-polar compound with a molecular weight of less than 1500 Dalton, generally giving a monocharge ion. Here you see the analyte along with the solvent is spray here. And here you see this is the corona discharge. When it passes through the corona discharge, here you see there is the voltage. It's having some energy. So this energy is what it's doing. It ionizes both the solvent uh, ions as well as the analyte ion. And here you see this is the solvent ion along with the analyte ion. Both are uh, converted into ions. And those ions are then attracted toward the mass analyzer. Advantages, multiple charging is typically not observed as the ionization process is more energetic than ESI. Electron transfer or proton loss occurs in the negative mode. Proton transfer for protonation occurs in the positive mode. At atmospheric pressure, analyte molecules collide with the region ions frequently and hence ionization is very efficient. Limitation, very sensitive to contaminants such as alkali metals or basic compounds. Relatively low ionic current, relatively complex hardware compared to the other ionization source. ABCI is a method which creates ions at atmospheric pressure commonly coupled with high performance liquid chromatography. The ionization method is appropriate for relatively polar and semi-volatile sample. Consists of a nebulizer probe, here you see this is the nebulizer probe, which can be heated, ionization region with a corona discharge, this is the ionization region here, this is the corona discharge and it, when the when the, uh, when the solvent along with the analyte pass through the corona discharge, so it converts into ions and those ions are then attracted toward the mass analyzer. Atmospheric pressure photo ionization. Uh, here you see again it is similar to the, uh, the, to the other one, atmospheric pressure chemical ionization method. But here you see, instead of corona discharge, here we, you see we have the UV light source. So here the ionization takes place with the help of, uh, with the help of striking the, uh, the analyte sample as well as the solvent sample with the UV light. Okay, and the UV light convert both the analyte sample as well as the solvent sample into ions, and those ions are then accelerated toward the mass analyzer. Disadvantages, it can generate background ions from solvent. It requires vaporization temperature ranging from 350 to 500 degrees Celsius, which can cause thermal degradation. Application, it has the capability to ionize compound with a wide range of polarity while being remarkably tolerant of matrix components for HPLC additives. APVI has been proved to be a valuable tool for analytes which are poorly ionized or not ionized by ESI and APCI. APPI was shown to be able to detect steroid hormones down to several nanogram per liter and had been prone to have much higher sensitivity than ESI. Results indicate that APPI using Talvin as a dopant provides exceptional ionization capabilities for a broad range of compounds, in particular for hormones and steroid compared to APCI. Electron impact ionization or electron ionization. It is the most widely used and highly developed method. It is also known as electron bombardment or electron ionization. Electron impact ionization source consists of ionization ionizing chamber 
which is maintained at a pressure 0 0.005 tar, very low pressure, and temperature of 200 degrees. Electron gun is located perpendicular to the chamber. Electrons are emitted from the from the gun by thermoionic emission and accelerated by a potential of 70 volt applied between the filament and the anode. These electrons are drawn in ionization chamber through positively charged site. The number of electron is controlled by filament temperature and energy. The sample is brought to a temperature high enough to produce molecular vapors. The gaseous natural molecules then pass through the molecule leaks and enter to the ionization chamber. The gaseous sample and the electron collide at right angle in the chamber and ions are formed by exchange of energy during this collision between the electron beam and sample. Here you see this is uh, uh, this is the filament from this filament uh, that is the tungsten filament which, uh, which emits the electron and those electrons are accelerated here to, to, the, uh, to the anode because it is uh, a high potential difference between the filament this is and this anode okay and here when it is accelerated toward here and when the sample is passing through the uh, to the electron cloud so there is ejection of more electron and we are getting the positive ions or we are getting the molecular ions and here we you see we have the uh, magnetic also we have also the, uh, the magnetic pressure and the electrical pressure so here this is the the source which emit electron these electrons are accelerated by providing high potential difference and when it's accelerated